Hi, this is Jesse Liberty for Telerik. Today we're going to be talking about RAD Sparkline, managing data and data binding with RAD Sparkline. To get started, let's open up a new project. We're going to call this one RAD Sparkline dot data. It's a Silverlight 5 application and we're going to add charting and also we're going to add data visualization. Before we begin this time adding the spark lines, I want to add a class that's going to hold the data for us. So let's go ahead and create a new class and let's call that class product. The product class is going to consist of three public properties. The first one is going to be of type double and that will be the cost. The second type will also be of type double and that will be the unit cost. And finally, our third type will be of type date time. And that will be the purchase date for the product. With the product class in place, we can save that. And now we can turn to main page.xaml and we can create our layout. Let's start again by creating a stack panel. Inside the stack panel, we'll add our first rad spark line. We're going to begin this time with a rad column spark line. And let's set a few attributes such as the name, the horizontal and vertical alignment, the height and the width, which this time we will make substantially wider. Let's set a width of 400. Turn show axis to false and set the items source here in the XAML to binding. And since we're going to give it no path or target, we'll be looking for a data source to bind to. Here's a new property, the X value path. That's where do I get my data for the X value? And we're going to use the cost property. And for the Y value path, we're going to use unit cost. So we're going to be comparing unit cost to cost in this spark line. Let's save that. And we'll go to the code behind for main page. Now I'm just going to put this code in line in the constructor to keep things simple. We will initialize a date time with today's date time. And we will make a list of products, which we will call data. And that, of course, uses the product that we just created with its three properties. We're going to initialize our list of product by putting in a new product object, which in turn we will initialize, setting the cost to 1, the unit cost to 2, and we'll set the purchase date to today. Let's add a second product to our list of products and this time we'll set the cost is equal to 2, the unit cost is equal to 4, and we'll set the purchase date to tomorrow, that is by adding one day to today. Continuing with our initialization of the data, we will initialize a third product. Then we'll use a little bit of cut and paste to add a fourth product. We'll fix up the cost, unit cost, and purchase date, and then we'll add a final fifth product so that we have some substantial data to work with in our spark line. And we'll change the unit cost around a little bit so that it's not a strictly linear progression. 
All right, let's hit a semicolon at the end to end that initialization and set the data context to the data we just created. We're ready to run this. Take a look first at our XAML that we're comparing cost over unit cost. Run the application and we can see the diagram. It's a little bit crowded for my taste, so what I'm going to do is bring that down, come back to my XAML, and in the stack pack I'm going to stack panel I'm going to add a margin of 20 which will give us a little bit more room. All right, we can now see relative cost to unit cost as we compare each one. Notice there's no axis and there's no labeling. This is a very sparse but very lightweight control, but there is more that we can do to make this very useful. Let's go ahead and copy our column spark line, paste it, and make a couple changes. First of all, we'll add a margin of 20 to both of the controls, the original and the new. Secondly, and more pressing, we will go and change the type of the second spark line to a rad linear spark line, and we will change its name to X linear spark line. We'll keep the same binding and run the application. And that gives you two different graphic representations of your unit cost versus your cost. You're not restricted to comparing those two values. We can change this from comparing cost to unit cost. Let's go over to our product and pick up purchase date come back and say we're going to have this be purchase date compared to unit cost. While we're doing that, let's show the last point indicator and show our high point indicator and our low point indicator. Now we are free to come in here and experiment with the data Changing the magnitude of the data will change the comparison. And we can see the change resulting in the graphs. Let's go back and set our second spark line to cost versus unit cost. Make a copy of that and add a third spark line, this time an area spark line. And finally, let's go back to our data one more time. And this time, set the unit cost on the third value to a negative value and run our application. And you can immediately see the impact it has very dramatically showing that negative value in each of our spark lines. I hope you've seen how easy it is to bind real-world data to your spark line. For Telerik, this is Jesse Liberty. I look forward to talking with you again soon.